Come on up, Baru. Why don't you stand up to your feet? I've got good news. A couple of days ago, Jesus was put into a tomb. But as of today, he has risen. Come on up, Baru. Make a shout in this place. Come on. Woo!
was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the end.
Come on, sh shout somebody. Come on, lift up one more shout this morning. Because when you shout, your shout doesn't fall on deaf ears. But the God you're shouting to, he hears. And the God you're praying to, he hears. The God we're giving praise to, he's alive this morning. He's alive this morning. We checked the tomb 2,000 years ago. Woo, and it's empty. Hallelujah, it's empty, it's empty, it's empty, it's empty, it's empty. And what that tells us this morning is that sickness and disease, depression and anxiety can no longer hold us back because the tomb could not hold him back. Hallelujah. When he rose, he rose with all power. So this morning we dance on empty graves. Hallelujah. You who were dead in trespasses and sin, he has now made alive. Thank you, Jesus, for making me alive. Hallelujah.
used to hold you down. Come on, think about that addiction that held you captive for years and God in an instant and God in a moment broke it off of your life. Come on, think about that sickness that should have had you dead. Think about that depression that held you in the bed for days and weeks and months. But the Lord came in and he restored your joy. Come on and think about it this morning. Think about it. Think about it. And then dance on an empty grave. We dance on an empty grave.
chapter 24 verses 1 through the first portion of 6 it reads like this from the New International Version well from the King James Version the New King James Version excuse me now on the first day of the week very early in the morning they and certain of the women went with them to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb Woo! but they found the stone rolled away then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this that behold two men in shining garments they saw then they were afraid and they bowed their faces to the earth and these two men said this why do you seek the living among the dead he is not here but he is risen he is risen yes God there's an empty grave there's an empty tomb go to the tomb of Mohammed and you will see a, a tomb that is full go to the tomb of Lenin and you will see a tomb filled with bones but if you go to Jerusalem and find the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea you will look in there and find no bones because he has risen come on the grave could not contain help me say Christians it is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ let's pray father we thank you for your sacrifice sending your son Jesus we thank you for your sacrifice being obedient Holy Spirit we thank you for continuing to empower Jesus to meet the standards of the agreement to empower him to endure to the end father we ask now Lord that you would give us that same spirit that same power that same ability to overcome and succeed against all odds that same power that rose Jesus from the dead we do thank you that it resides in us we thank you father so we declare in faith we have victory in every season. We declare in faith, we have victory over every disease. We declare in faith, we have victory over iniquity and sin. We declare in faith, we have victory over the world. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to partake in your resurrection. 
resurrection power. Let resurrection life begin to erupt in every area of our lives. Now, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you know you got Jesus living in your heart and he is risen, someone lift up a shout in this house. Bless your family. Smack someone appropriately and tell them happy resurrection. Just smack them. If it's your wife, don't touch her. Don't touch her. Don't. We don't have insurance for that. God bless you. <laughs> happy resurrection, family. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. He got up. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, man. I see you. God bless you, brother. Happy resurrection. God bless you. I am so happy to see your faces. So happy to celebrate with you the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many enjoyed uh, called out uh, reemergence? Praise the Lord. Don't call it a comeback. They've been here for years. Some of you know what I'm saying. You shouldn't be listening to that music. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. If you'd like to be a part of Called Out, please, we take every shape, every size, every age. We had six-year-olds, and we had, where's, where's Tony? Hey, Tony, 58 years old. No, 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 44. God bless you. Tony was in there. If you want to be a part of that, come and join with us. It was awesome doing it. How many, did you enjoy it? Amen, 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 amen. You can be a part of that. You can join with that. God bless you. Ushers, come. I want to take this morning's offering, and we have, we have a wonderful, wonderful presentation getting ready for you. The choir is back, family. Look at the choir. Come on, choir. Fire on the choir, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A choir, the fire choir. Look at the attire on the choir. You like that alliteration? <laughs> wow, I'm a little punch drunk right now. I'm just letting you know right now. I know it's getting late early. I can feel it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. How many, before we, as you're preparing your hearts to give, how many experienced the Easter presentation this year, this past weekend, Friday and Saturday. No, some of you didn't see it. Did, did you guys see it up there? Okay, some of you up there. Who did not get, get a chance to see it? Who didn't get a chance to see it? Okay, okay. Well, there's a special announcement that's coming. Perk your ears up. Something about this Friday, an encore performance, but I'm, I'm not the announcement person. So just, just listen to Amanda as she comes in just a minute. But it's exciting. It's a powerful tool. It's, it, uh, I, I watch it, and I feel like I die every time. I mean, I am playing Jesus, but I'm just saying, <laughs> it, it is so, it is impactful it, 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 to see what Christ has done for us. Amen. Listen for that announcement. I want to encourage you in, your th in and through your giving this morning, and I want to show you what Resurrection Sunday, the principle of Easter, how it relates to us and how we can activate that principle every single day of our lives. Are you ready for it? John chapter 12, verse 24, from the New International Version. It says this, Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Hallelujah. So what, what happened to us, you, we, were, we were born sinners. We were born into sin. I almost, I almost gave a biggie lyric right there. Born sinner, the opposite of a winner. Remember when I used to eat sardines for dinner? Never mind. 
Now I eat sushi. Praise God. <laughs> like I told you, it's getting late early in here. It's, 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 it's getting frisky. And there's more to come, believe me. <laughs> we were born into sin by the action of one man. And then by the action of the last Adam, which is my favorite uh, nomenclature for Jesus, my favorite title or descriptor, he was the last Adam because he fixed what the first Adam broke. Amen. And his life was a seed. But the seed, unless it is sown, it will not turn into multiple seeds. So you and I, because we have Christ in our hearts, because we believe in Christ, because we are here, the reason why we are here is because of the principle of the tithe. The tithe has its greatest personification in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because what he shows is he was that kernel, he was that seed that went into the ground, was sown, and now produced much fruit. You and I are the much fruit of his seed being sown, his life being sown. So if you want, if you want to keep your seed and eat your seed, that's fine with me. But what I want is I want harvest. I want perpetual seeds. The Bible says he gives seed, not to the eaters. He gives seed to the sowers. So if you want multiple seeds which produces multiple harvests and a perpetual flow, you have to be a sower. You have to, be a, you have to sow seed. Amen. And so what we are doing is every time we have opportunity to sow a seed of kindness, sow a seed financially, sow a seed of love and mercy, sow a seed of acceptance, sow a seed of forgiveness, we are literally making way for a harvest of everything that we have sown to come back on us. Amen? Live that life and do it in faith because that is how, that is one of the greatest ways that we can honor the sacrifice of Jesus by putting into action the practice or the principle that he himself used with his own life, sow the seed, so that you might have many seeds to continue to sow and have a harvest. Amen. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Lift your tithe, lift your offering. Those of you that are online, get ready to give right now. Father, we thank you for this principle of your life that you have demonstrated to us. Lord, I pray for increase in every area of our lives, God. Increase spiritually, increase emotionally, physically, financially, in our relationships. Increase anointing, increase revelation knowledge of you, God. Make us examples of your goodness. Make us examples of your mercy and grace. Do it so that your name would be exalted. Do it for your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you're ready to receive from the Lord, shout amen. God bless your family. Ushers, you may serve the people. Those of you online, go and sow right now in Jesus' name. and I have some announcements for you uh, as you're giving today. So as Pastor Regan stated, we just had our Easter show playing Who Is This Man this past Friday and Saturday. We had such a great turnout. A whole bunch of people came up to the altar and gave their lives to Christ. And that's what it's all about. That's the purpose of the shows. Yes. Amen is to win souls for the kingdom. And so we are so excited to announce that we are doing one last show. We're actually going to be extending the show. We don't normally do this, but it is for a, a good reason. We All the proceeds are going to be going to new air conditioning. Summer is coming up, and so who's excited about that? <laughs> Amen. 
Uh, so this is basically a fundraiser show. Uh, the house does take some maintaining as any other house does. And so right now we want to focus on those air conditioners. So if you've seen the show, it's a great opportunity to come back out, invite someone if you didn't get the opportunity to do that. Tickets are only $10 a person and you can find those on our website at upperroomny.com. So be sure to get your tickets for this Friday at 7.30 p.m. And then I do just want to let you know about some of our weekly happenings that we have going on here at Upper Room. Every Tuesday night, we have prayer at 7.30 p.m. It's only one hour. We brand it as the Hour of Power. We take prayer requests. Pastor Regan prays for them out loud. Um, and although they are in person, we do stream them online as well. So if you can't make it here, be sure to tune in. And then we also have service every Friday night for our youth and young adults, but it is open to everyone and it is a different experience. So please be sure to come out and check that out as well. And then of course we have our Sunday services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And we have Sunday school parents opens for the 11 11 o'clock service from ages one years old to two to second grade. I'm sorry, one years old to second grade. However, pre-registration is required. You do have to pre-register throughout the week before you take your kids to Sunday school. We don't like turning parents and kids away, so please be sure to do that. You can go on our website, and we also have a QR code right outside. If you take your camera phone and it, it scans, um, and a link pops up, it's very easy. If you have any questions, give us a call or ask someone. And now we have a song selection by our amazing band and choir. Can we give a hand to the band and the choir? They're gonna be singing Lift Up Your Voices. Enjoy and God bless. that again. Lift up your voices now. Lift up your voices now. Sing praises unto God. For all the things, all the things that he has done. Oh, for it all to him. He is the morning sun. Sing praises. Sing praises. more time say lift up your voices now lift up your voices now sing praises unto
blood still keeps you. If you know the blood's over your children. If you know the blood's over your finances. If you know the blood has saved the wretch. Saved the wretch like you. Lift up a shout of Thank you, Father. And I know it was the blood for me. Woo! Ah! I, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hey! Yes, God. Yes, God. And what can wash my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus come on family help me say and what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus Resurrection Sunday. As you're standing, let me read this verse to you, then you may be seated in just a minute. John chapter 19, 
verse 33 through 34. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, which was according to the custom. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We pray that these next few moments we share together would bring us closer to you. Help me deliver your word, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. like to begin our time together by giving you some facts that will help you to be able to understand and with your mind be able to defend the truth of the gospel. The Lord encourages us to serve him with every part of us. That includes our body, it includes our mind and intellect, emotions, and it includes our spirit. I want you to know that the life, death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ is not a fairy tale. Come on. Through symbols, sacraments, and ceremonies, we bring back the remembrance of what the Lord has done for us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the coup de grace of all that Jesus had ever done. It is the piece de resistance. It is the, the single most important thing that has ever happened in human history. Amen. I know that there's a lot of joy, a lot of uh, celebration and emphasis on the birth of Jesus. And as we go through the story, that is the beginning of the story. And what a story it is. And rightfully so. The exchanging of gifts takes place because it is symbolic of the gift that God the Father had given to humanity. And we celebrate that. And that is a special occasion. It is a time of reflection. And it is important in our lives and in our Christian faith. But I want you to know that the best part of a story isn't the introduction. The best part of a story is the finale. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. And I want to talk to you for just a few minutes and give you some theological bullets to be able to shoot down any haters, detractors, or naysayers. It's important that the world doesn't think that we're believing, bumbling idiots. We are smart, we are intelligent, and we have faith. Amen. I want to give you some historical proofs that all throughout Christendom, as you know, Christianity, those that are under the banner of Christianity, there is approximately three billion of us that celebrate 
and go under the descriptor of Christian. Within the body of Christ, within those that call themselves Christian, all three billion of us, there are so many factions, there are so many divisions, there are so many denominations that believe this and believe that and take this and don't take that. However, there are six points concerning the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that is widely accepted by all factions, by all denominations, by all theological persuasions. And what these are called, theologically speaking, are the minimal facts. And I would like to introduce you to them and just give you just some context factually of why the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is not a fiction, but is a reality. It's a moment in time that took place physically on the earth. Number one, it is important to understand that the fact that Jesus died by crucifixion, which was a, a, a way that the Romans implemented justice, this was a public death. There were thousands and thousands of people that were there. This wasn't a private assassination. He didn't drink a cup and poison was in it. He was publicly humiliated. It's important to know this because it means that in this public forum, if the stories match by majority, it's, it's more probable that it actually happened. More witnesses to the fact that it happened. That's number one. Number two, Jesus' disciples believed that he rose again on the third day at the expense of their own lives. They went out and they literally died for a lie? I think not. They had an experience which no doctrine can teach you. They had an encounter with which no uh, mental ascension can bring you to. Can I tell you something? You can argue your opinion all you want, but when you meet someone that has had an experience, no doctrine can trump an experience. No art of persuasion can cause someone to be as persuading as an experience. Taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Come talk to me. Let me show you how He changed me. Let me show you what this power of resurrection has done for me contemporarily, right now, here in this moment. Don't, don't tell me it's a fairy tale, it's a myth. The first disciples died for this. That's number two. Number three, it's important to understand that as oral traditions are passed down, often what will happen is through the process of time, the story will change or something will be added to it. This resurrection story, the principle, the fundamental principle of this resurrection was preached right from the very beginning. It's one of the original doctrines, you know, where it says in the book of Acts, they continued in the apostles', the apostles doctrine, prayer and the breaking of bread and koinonia, that's how the church grew, you know? This was a fundamental principle in the first church. This wasn't something that was added by the Dead Sea Scrolls. Can I tell you this? Let me just, let me just drop this on you for a second. Truth is not something that has been revealed just in the 1950s or recently. Truth is ancient. Truth is forever. It is eternal. Why? Because Jesus said, I am truth. If it's a new fad, it's a lie. If it's a new religion, 
And they want you to drink Kool-Aid and wear uptowns and go in sleeping bags. It's a lie. You understand what I'm saying? Truth has existed before time ever existed. The older it is, the more true it is. Hallelujah. Number four. The apostles suffered great persecution for preaching this gospel. Their lives were turned upside down. The Romans went on a rampage and through oppression in the first church, the gospel was spread. The, the disciples would have never went to Samaria unless there was persecution by the Romans. It was, it was the pressure that pushed them out. The only reason why the eunuch from Ethiopia received the gospel and was baptized that Philip met on the road, you know, in the book of Acts, was because of pressure, was because of the persecution. What the enemy thought he was killing, he was actually growing. Hallelujah. But, but the point I'm trying to make to you right now for our all intensive purposes, they received persecution and their children were eaten. Lions ripped them apart and they still believed. They gave their life just to say, Jesus rose from the dead. What's a, why are you going to kill me over that? Because there's power in it. Because truth brings freedom. And, and, and the, the next two, I want to lump together because it's the same principle, but it's two different persons. The transformation of Saul of Tarsus from persecutor to preacher. And also the transformation from the half-brother of Jesus named James, who became the lead pastor in the church uh, in Jerusalem and was the presiding voice over the great theological discussion that happened, the council that took place in Acts chapter 15, whether Gentiles should be circumcised in order to become Christians, it was his final stamp of no, they do not, you are saved by grace. His final stamp, the fact that he bought in and had such a transformation, the fact that Saul of Tarsus turned into Paul the Apostle, who wrote Romans, who wrote 1st and 2nd Corinthians, who wrote Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 1st and 2nd Timothy. He wrote two-thirds of the Bible. This guy was a psycho killing Christians, and then all of a sudden, he wants to become a Jesus freak. This transformation proves that it really happened. Do you understand? And guess what? You and I are the same proof today. As we are made into his image, going from glory to glory, through the process of sanctification, reading our word, praying daily, being in worship gatherings like this, hearing the word, having koinonia fellowship with each other, and rinse and repeat the whole process all over again, becoming more like Christ. The more we change into Christ, the more we prove his death, burial, and resurrection is an actual fact. Hallelujah. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 17. He said, if Christ be not raised from the dead, our faith is in vain. We have no faith if Jesus didn't die. Everything is hinged on the fact that he died and rose again. It's the most important miracle of all the 37 miracles Jesus did in his lifetime. This miracle was the most important. Can I show you why? It proved that he was God. If you never remember another thing about the resurrection, it proved that he was God because all through his tenure, all they ever spoke about was the fact that he is just a man. He's just a simple man. Matter of fact, they went even further. He was the illegitimate son, the bastard child of Mary. How does this guy get, she's pregnant 
and Joseph isn't the father? How is this even possible? He was ridiculed and mocked and scorned at his entire life. You're not the son of God. You're the son of a train wreck. You're not the son of God. And then all of a sudden, when he rose again, it sealed the coffin shut. No questions. You see, but he needed to be man, but he also needed to be God. He needed to be so, he needed to be enough God, but, but also he needed to be enough man. He couldn't, he couldn't be too much God or too much man. He needed to be enough man that he could save, enough God that he could save me, but enough man that he could relate to me. He needed to be enough God that he could deliver me. But he also needed to be enough man that he could know the hell that I am going through. Hallelujah. He needed to be so much God that it was unbelievable. You could hardly believe that he was man. Yet so much man that it was hard to believe that he is God. Hallelujah. He needed to be so much God that he could heal the sick. Yet so much man that he could have compassion. He needed to be so much man that he cried when his best friend Lazarus was dead in the tomb. Yet so much God that when he went to that tomb, he could declare with power, Lazarus, come forth. He needed to be so much man that he fell asleep in the boat Yet so much God that when he picked his head up off the pillow and got out from the bow of that ship and stood on the Galilean Sea and said, peace be still, he needed to be enough God that he could calm that crazy sea. Hallelujah. He needed to be so much man that he could die on the cross. Yet so much God that on the third day, he could raise again in power. Hallelujah. He turns every grave into a gateway of glory for his namesake. He turns every tomb of death into a womb of opportunity where new life can spring forth. He takes every mistake and turns it into a masterpiece. He takes every mess and uses it as a message. He takes every test and turns it into a testimony. He takes every setback and reworks it into a comeback. He takes every turn of rejection, takes that rejection and uses it as a redirection so that his will can be accomplished in your life. Don't underestimate the process. Every time there's a tearing, every time there's a ripping, Every time the enemy is coming against you, it's breaking you down. It's tearing you up. It's, it's, it's causing pain in your life. But I've got news for you. The only way to see the treasure that is hidden in your life is to have the box be broken open. Hallelujah. Every time there's a tear, every time there's a rip, every time the enemy comes against you, he's ripping open. But what he doesn't realize is as he's ripping you open, he is causing new life to spring forth out of your situation. He's bringing out the treasure. Even when the devil poops on you, you can still praise him. You can still give him thanks because the pain is revealing the treasure on the inside of you. Hallelujah! Please take this bird from me. He pooped on me again. I am, thank you. I'm going to give you the bird now. Thank you. <laughs> if it wasn't for pain, if it wasn't for ripping, 
If it wasn't for pressure, what's inside of you would never be revealed. Woo! And that's exactly what they were doing to Jesus. As they pulled him in on that sleepless night, they found him at Gethsemane. The anguish and the sorrow that he experienced caused him to, 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 to have something called hemohydrosis, where he literally sweat droplets of blood. They, they took him and they marched him between three different courts, five miles in the middle of the night. This was very significant because you don't hold court in the nighttime. They knew that what they were doing was wrong, but yet they plucked his beard. They whipped him. They scourged him with a cat of nine tails. Can I tell you something? The devil was so stupid to rip open and try to break down Jesus. Don't you know? You better be careful who you're breaking down, devil. You better think about what you're doing exactly. Because every time there's a ripping, every time there's a tearing, every time there is pain, a little bit more of that box is ripping open. A little bit more of that treasure is beginning to be seen. All of a sudden they, they take him and they, they whipped him till he was a bloody mess of protoplasm. He was oozing with pain. They strapped upon his back 75 pound beam and he marched 600 meters down the Via Della Rosa. People mocking him, tearing at him, saying if you're the son of God, why are you letting this happen? You're a fool, devil. How dare you? Don't you know? You must have never read John 12, 24. Lest the corn of wheat die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, whoo, if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. They took a five inch spike. They nailed it in between his radius and carpal bone. Set in his hand like a claw. They tucked his feet, nailed the same spike down into the intermetatarsal space of his foot, giving him drop foot. He, he was suffering from asphyxiation. Every time he took a breath, more bones would break. Every time he tried to speak, they mocked him and put upon his, his cross the king of the Jews. They gave him a wooden scepter and a purple robe. Everything that they did was breaking him down. Everything that he did was tearing his box up. Everything that they did was causing what was on the inside of him to come out just a little bit more. Come out just a little bit more. Come out just a little bit more. What is the process bringing out of your life? What is the failure bringing out of your life? What is the accusation bringing out of your life? Can I tell you what happened? Jesus gave up the ghost. The Bible says that in the ninth hour, darkness covered the earth. The earth began to tremble. Volcanoes began to erupt. All of a sudden, the Son of God was suspended between heaven and earth paralleled between two thieves and he cries out with a loud voice it is finished what happened his spirit was released on mankind now you have that same spirit that rose jesus from the dead why because his box was broken because his box was broken the treasure came out. Go through the pain. Go through the process. Go through what the hell you're going through. Why? Because there is power. There is authority. No pain, no power. No pain, no anointing. No pain, no glory. Go through it. Go through it. Go through it. Go through it. Go! Don't stop! Don't give up! Don't back up! Don't let up! Don't shut up! Don't sit down! Go through it! There is power! There is power! Let the process give you power! In Jesus' name! Stand to your feet all over this 
house. Hey! Thank you, Lord. rejoice in the pain that I have to go through. Why? Because strength and power is revealed through that suffering. Strength, the treasure that's on the inside of you is revealed and put on display when the box is broken. And that is the principle that you and I can live in of what the power of the resurrection of Jesus is on Easter Sunday. Every day can be Easter Sunday. Every day he's turning graves into gardens. Every day he's turning tombs into wombs. Every day he's taking messes. Don't give up because there's power on the other side. Don't give up. Don't give up on your children. There's power on the other side. Don't give up on your marriage. There's power on the other side. You can beat the addiction of pornography. There's power on the other side. You can be set free. You're gonna be set free of this drug abuse. There's power on the other side. Go through it. Go through it. On the third day, he rose again. You and I were born for resurrection power. Woo! Turn to your neighbor and say, I was born for this. I was born for that. I was born. I was born for power. Ah! Woo! I was born for authority. Woo! I was born to crush serpents. Ha! I was born to destroy the works of iniquity. I was born for this. Woo! I, was, I was born for this. I want to pray for you before we leave. We still got a little time. If you, if you are experiencing the process of the breaking, I want you to know that power is on the other side. I want to pray for you. If that's okay, I want to pray for you. If that's you and you would like prayer, we have, we have these socially distant uh, spots here. God bless you, brother. In Jesus' name. And I, I want you to know this. I, I, I gotta, you can come, 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 come. I want you to know this. This is the key. This is the prayer. This is the necessary prayer, okay? The prayer is not, God, take this pain from me. Because without pain, there's no power. So, so the, the prayer is, God, help me endure to the point that I receive the power. It's an endurance thing. See, see, pain is not a punitive response to something you've done wrong. Pain is the gateway to power. No pain, finish it for me. No pain, no gain. Who said that, Donna Summers? 1988? No pain, no gain. The way you build muscle is by tearing it down. What? Does that even make sense? The way you build is by pain. And I want to tell you something. Hear me. You were not built to break. You were built to last. And what you think is breaking off of you and what is and the pain that you're feeling, it's only a covering that's guarding the treasure that needs to be revealed. That is the power of the resurrection. That is the principle of Easter. What was concealed is now revealed through death. Woo!
death reveals it death brings it to life what a, what a what a what a conundrum what an oxymoron death brings it to life are you tracking with me are you picking up what I'm putting down are you smelling what I'm cooking this morning praise the Lord <laughs> I want to pray for you those of you that are here please lift your hands father we thank you for this principle of life through death and oh God I pray Lord God that all of the pain that we are experiencing father all of the trial all of the trauma God some of it that we even inflicted on ourselves God I pray that you would empower us strengthen your lift your hands strengthen your people oh God strengthen your people that they might be able to endure to the place of power strengthen don't stop don't give up don't give in there is resurrection power there is life at the end of this process there is life life in the name of Jesus life life in the name of Jesus there is life there is life there is life in Jesus name life life we thank you father we thank you for life life in Jesus name life life at the end of this process thank you father Lord we thank you for your resurrection I pray that there would be resurrection power starting this week let the turnaround begin this week right now in Jesus name turn it around turn it around your finances turned around in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Father, we thank you for the power to endure. Say it with me. Say, Father, I thank you for the power. Come on, come on, come on, say it. For the power to endure. Ooh, I thank you for the power to endure. Stay in your place. Don't you dare move. Don't you dare wiggle out of the process. God is making something out of you. Don't you dare. Don't you dare move out of his will. Stay where God has you. Because I promise you, there's a resurrection at the end of this tunnel. There's resurrection life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. What I'm going to need everyone to do very quickly, if you could just make your way back to your seat, and we're going to organize, we're going to do this decently and in order. Do I have an usher up in the balcony to help? Who, who, Mario, who's up there? Nari? Nareen, okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, I'm going to release the balcony. So those of you on the main level, if you could just hold for one second. We just want to make sure that we're doing things safely. We want to have dismissal and try to limit as best as possible uh, interaction for all of our safety. Balcony, if you would please be dismissed. And in just a, by, by the way, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week, Balcony people. Thank you. This is the place to be, family. Let's build it together. Let's build it together. Amen. As the balcony is dismissing, I believe that there is a birthday. <gasps> what? Is it your birthday? Go shorty. It's your birthday. No, no, hey, 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 hey. This is Easter Sunday, ma'am. I don't know. Turning up like it's the club. Hold on a minute. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Where's Douglas? Douglas is your, is your prize. Oh, there it is. Come on. Come on, let's. Doug, we want you to sing happy birthday to her. <laughs> it's okay, Doug. There's only 1,500 people here. Don't worry. <laughs> Come on, I'll sing with you. Can we all sing to Rosa? 
It's her, th- it's her 30th birthday today. Ready? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Stretch your hands out to her. Father, let this be the best year of her life in Jesus' name. Woo! Amen. Whose birthday? It's your birthday, girlfriend? Is it your birthday? How old are you? Birthday. It's your birthday? Okay, can we sing to her too as, as the balcony is dismissing? Is that okay? What's your name? No, we're going to sing. No, no, I, I, yes, ma'am. We're, we're definitely going to sing. Kayla. Okay. She knows what she wants. She is a boss. Praise the Lord. You going to run a Fortune 500 company when you get older? Okay. Okay. Good girl. Amen. <laughs> Whose birthday is it? It's your birthday, too? Nanny? Magnificent. It's your birthday today? We're going to sing, Kayla. We're going to sing to... Kayla, and we're going to sing for Mrs. Dono, Peg Dono. It's, it was her birthday also. Is this all right? We're a family church here. Is that okay? Kayla, we're going to sing to you. Come on, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Pavarotti. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, girlfriend. Hallelujah. Yep. Joyce, it was your birthday too. I just got word. You turned 25 yesterday? 25 times 2 plus 10? Amen! Last birthday. Okay, guys, last birthday. (laughs) This is Easter. Come on, this is awesome. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All righty. Happy birthday, dear joy. Love you, Joyce. God bless you. Okay, Mario, get these people out of here before we start singing for another hour. (laughs) I love your family. I'm praying for you. Be incredible in Jesus' name. Happy Resurrection Sunday.